So today's lecture uh, is on the bipolar junction transistor, and uh, we'll be discussing about the different types of biasing uh, and its application in terms of several electronic circuits. So last day we have seen that uh, there are different types of biasing, uh, like uh, fixed bias or base bias circuit. Then we have collector to base bias circuit. We have emitter bias circuits. And we have voltage divider bias circuits. And uh, you have also seen the implication of different circuits, the advantages, the limitations of each and every circuit. Now, today we will uh, observe the implication of these circuits from different perspective by taking into account different electronic circuits with the numerical values of the resistances, the DC gain, and the supply voltage. So. Today's lecture is on the tutorial perspective. And uh, I have taken into account uh, at least one circuit from each of the categories. That means uh, one circuit from fixed bias, one circuit from base bias, at least one. One circuit from emitter bias, one circuit from voltage divider bias. And you'll understand the implication of each and every biasing circuit. So to start with, the first question is on no bias circuit. So uh, that means uh, the base is kept open. That means uh, there is no connection. The base is not biased initially. If you just uh, observe the circuit over here, for question number one, we have the BJT. We have the BJT, the NPN BJT, NPN type of transistor over here. This is the base terminal. Base is kept open. So base is directly connected to the signal. OK, so there is no bias present at the, at the base emitter circuit. And uh, emitter is directly connected to ground. And from collector to supply, there is a load resistance of the collector resistance RC. That is equal to 2.5 kilo ohms with a 6-volt VCC, 6-volt supply. Now you know that in order to operate the transistor as an amplifier, we need to ensure that this base emitter junction must be forward biased. And the base character junction must be reverse biased. So that you have to ensure always in order to keep the operating point of that particular transistor in the active or linear region. Uh, but as you can remember that there are three regions operations for any BJT. One is known as the cutoff region, where both the junctions, uh, both the base emitter junctions and the base character junctions are reverse biased. We have the uh, active or linear region, where the base emitter junction is forward biased and the base character junction is reverse biased. And in order to use the transistor as an amplifier, we normally operate the transistor in that particular region that is the active or linear region. And ultimately, we have another region of operation, which is known as the saturation region, in which case you'll find that the base emitter and the base character junction are forward biased. So these are the three basic regions of operation. So whenever we will uh, use the transistor as, as a switch, as an electronic switch, so in that case, we will uh, operate or we will fix the operating point either in cutoff or in saturation. So in cutoff region, the transistor will act as an as, a, or as an open switch. That means there is no flow of current. And uh, in the saturation region, the transistor will act as a closed switch. That means the switch is on. So switch will be off under uh, this cutoff region, and switch will be on under this saturation region. However, in order to use the transistor as an amplifier, we need to operate the device. We need to operate the BJT in the active or linear region. Now, why the name is linear? Because you know that in the linear region, the base current, IB, and collector current, IC, they are proportional to each other. And you know the proportionality constant, that is beta, del IC by del IB, that is known as the beta or the transistor current gain. Now, here, what we find is the base is basically open. So this is connected to the signal. So there is no bias for the base. So even if the signal is absent, so when the signal is absent, the base emitter potential is equal to zero volt. So obviously, you understand that this circuit will not be performing the operation of amplification under any circumstances. So the question is that you have to find out the maximum collector current for the faithful amplification. You need to find out the maximum collector current for faithful amplification. And the second question is you have to find out the minimum zero signal collector current. So let me explain what you mean by this uh, minimum zero signal collector current and what is meant by the maximum collector. So what you find is there is a six volt supply over here. And with uh, RC is equal to 2.5 kilo ohms. Now, you know that whenever the transistor is on the verge of the saturation, that means 
whenever it is just entering into the saturation region in that case the vc value this collector to emitter potential it will be constant and that value you can you can select any anything and here they have considered the value to be 1 volt now whenever the vc value is less than 1 volt then obviously this faithful amplification could not take place so we have to ensure that vc should not be less than 1 volt because you know that as you increase the ic value so there is a simple kvl law which we must admit that vcc is equal to icrc plus vc the so if i apply the kvl over this collector emitter circuit then you find that vcc is equal to icrc drop plus vc now vcc is fixed that is 6 volt and that is equal to icrc plus vc now as the collector current increases as the collector current ic increases this icrc drop will also increase but vcc is constant that is equal to 6 volt so as a matter of fact this vc will be reduced as you increase the value of ic now whenever you need to find out the maximum collector current under this condition vc will be minimum because that is fixed 6 volt is fixed so what is the minimum vc value so you have to find out the value of ic maximum ic ic max considering the minimum vc now the minimum vc is equal to 1 volt so what will be the drop across this ic across this load resistance that is equal to 5 volt only because 6 volt here you have drop over here across this rc and you have this collector to emitter voltage difference so maximum voltage that can be possible across this load resistance or collector resistance rc is equal to 5 volt because vc minimum is equal to 1 volt if vc minimum or vc value is less than 1 volt so in that case your transistor will move into the saturation region but we have to ensure we have to find out the maximum collector current for faithful amplification so for faithful amplification transistor must not enter into the saturation region it must be within the active region so in order to find out this maximum ic this vc should be minimum and that value is equal to 1 volt so considering this will be 1 volt so maximum drop that can take place across this rc is equal to 5 volt so if that volt that uh, voltage difference is 5 volt i mean the voltage drop across this load resistance is 5 volt you can uh, easily find out the maximum allowed collector current that is equal to 5 volt divided by 2.5 kilo ohms that is equal to 2, 2 milliampere so 2 milliampere is the maximum allowable collector current now if you increase the value of collector current beyond this 2 milliampere so in that case the transistor will no longer be in the active region so it will move into the saturation region so in that case this faithful amplification will not take place now the second question is that uh, you have to find out the minimum zero signal collector current now what do you mean by the minimum zero signal collector current zero signal you understand this signal whenever we talk about the signal so this signal identifies the time varying quantity like a sinusoidal signal a signal that you want to amplify so this is not a dc signal this is an ac signal a time varying quantity a sinusoidal signal like a cos omega not t like this so whenever the signal is absent so zero signal means what there is no time varying signal present so only you have provided the supply that means only you have provided the biasing so under this condition you have to find out the collector current what is the minimum value of the collector current whenever the signal is absent already have seen that the maximum collector current is equal to 2 milliampere that is fine so whenever we consider the maximum collector current so it includes both the dc component as well as the ac component right now whenever we say the minimum zero signal collector current so in that case you have to ensure that the signal is absent and under this condition what is the value of the collector current so let us see what is the scenario now let us assume that the current uh, the signal that is uh, that is available at the at the base circuit at the input of the amplifier is a sinusoidal signal and already you have seen that the maximum value of the collector current through this circuit is equal to 2 milliampere because if the value of 
IC is higher than 2 milli amperes, so in that case, the voltage drop across this ICRC will be higher than 5 volt. And as a matter of fact, this VCE collector temperature potential will be less than 1 volt, and the transistor will move into the saturation region. So for faithful amplification, this condition has to be avoided. So as a matter of fact, the maximum value will be called 2 milli ampere, maximum collector current, maximum instantaneous, total instantaneous collector current will be 2 milli ampere, which includes the DC part as well as the AC part, that means the time varying quantity. Now, under no condition, you must appreciate that the collector current can be negative. So collector current can be zero or it can be higher than zero. So it can't be negative. Now, if I consider that the peak of this particular sinusoidal signal is at 2 milliampere, and assuming that a symmetrical kind of swing, so at point A, you find that peak is there, that is 2 milliampere collector current at point A. Now, considering 2 milliampere to be the highest value and 0 milliampere to be the lowest value for the total instantaneous collector current. Remember, this 0 milliampere is a total instantaneous collector current. That is, that is obtained at point B. So what is the excursion from A to B? The excursion is of 2 milliampere. 0 is a minimum, 2 is the maximum. Now, each of these collector current at point A and point B, they signify the current corresponding to the DC component plus the instantaneous component. Now, whenever this instantaneous component is positive, so you are here at this point A, and whenever the instantaneous component is negative, then you are here at point B. But under no condition, the total collector current, total instantaneous collector current, that means the AC plus DC component cannot be less than zero. It can be zero or higher than zero. So zero is one limit at point B, and at point A, it is two milliampere. Now, if I assume that there is a symmetrical kind of swing, so you ensure that the baseline is at one milliampere. Baseline is at one milliampere. Now, over this one milliampere DC current, DC collector current, if I superimpose one AC collector current of amplitude plus minus one milliampere, that means one milliampere to minus one milliampere, then the total instantaneous collector current will be zero. Minimum, that will be zero. Now, under zero signal, so zero signal means this, this pink line is absent. Zero signal means pink line is absent. So during the negative peak, you see that the zero signal collector current becomes the minimum. And what is the value? That value is equal to, you find that during the positive peak of the signal, the total collector current is equal to 2 milliampere. And during the negative peak, the collector current is equal to 1 minus 1, that is equal to 0 milliampere. Now let us go back to the problem itself. The question was that, what was the minimum zero signal collector current? Minimum zero signal collector current. So zero signal, you understand, zero signal means the signal is absent, only the DC part is present. Now under this condition, signal is absent. So what is the value? The value is equal to one milliampere. So one milliampere is the zero signal minimum zero signal collector current. So this is for no bias circuit. This is for no bias circuit. Now let us consider the second architecture, uh, which is nothing but a fixed bias circuit. Or sometimes we also call it like a base bias circuit. Fixed bias circuit, so in that case, you'll find that there is a base resistance RB of 100 kilo ohms that is connected with this base, and this is connected directly to the supply. But the voltages are different here. Uh, this voltage is equal to 9 volt VCC, and this voltage is equal to 2 volt. Sometimes these two points can be connected together, this A and D, so that you can use only a single supply. But in this particular circuit, they have considered two different supply voltage. One is, on, one is for this collector circuit, one is for the base circuit. Now for collector circuit, the voltage is equal to 9 volt here, plus 9 volt. And for the base circuit, the voltage is equal to plus 2 volt here. So you have to obviously provide a plus a positive supply, otherwise this base emitter junction could not be forward biased. Now, two resistances are provided. RB is equal to 100 kilo ohms. Obviously, uh, you have to provide a relatively higher value for RB because you have to limit the value of the base current within a certain range. Otherwise, the base current could have been very high and the transistor may move into the saturation region. 
So that's why it is like uh, 100 kilo ohms as compared to his RC or, or the load resistance or the collector resistance, which is relatively small at 2 kilo ohms. Now uh, you need to find out the, the collector current and collector emitter voltage for beta is equal to 50. So if beta is equal to 50, the current gain is equal to 50, then you have to first find out the collector current and the collector emitter voltage. Now how to solve this type of circuit? Now you know that if I, if I just uh, follow this uh, base emitter junction and if I apply the KVL, you'll see that this A, B, E, N, if I just follow this loop, A, B, E, N, then you see that applying KVL, we find that I, B, R, B, this drop, plus VBE, this drop is equal to 2 volt because emitter is directly connected to ground. So IBRB plus VBE is equal to 2 volt. Now, obviously, uh, this uh, VBE normally small as compared to IBRB. So in that case, you can neglect uh, VBE. And if you don't want to neglect this VBE, in that case, you have to assume a value of 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 volt for VBE. And RB is already given. So you can easily find out what is the value of IB. So in this particular explanation they have just uh, neglected vbe so as a matter of fact uh, this ib is nothing but two volt by rb but if i if you are very much accurate then you have to subtract this vbe value from two volts it will be like 1.1.4 uh, or 1.3 volt divided by rb where rb is given like 100 kilos and uh, for this uh, you find that ib is equal to 20 microampere so if I uh, assume a non-zero value of VB, the IB will be less than 20 microampere. Now, uh, the, the value of IB is given 20 microampere. You have calculated the value of IB, that is 20 microampere. And you can easily calculate the collector current, which is asked in this question. You have to find out the collector current. So, in order to calculate the collector current, you have to multiply this IB with beta, because beta is given already. Beta is the current gain. That is equal to IC by IB. Beta is equal to 50 given. So, 50 multiplied with 20 microampere. So, it comes out to be 1 milliampere, 1000 microampere or 1 milliampere. That is the collector current. So already you have got the collector current for this circuit. Now once you've got the collector current, then you just apply the KVL, pictures voltage law, to this circuit, the output circuit, DEN, within this loop, you have to apply the KVL. Now you find that here two drops are taking place. One is the drop across this uh, load resistance or the collector resistance RC. And second one is the this collector to emitter drop VCE. So ICRC plus VC that is equal to 9 volt. Now already you have got the value of IC that is equal to 1 milliampere. You know the value of RC over here 2 kilo ohms. So uh, putting those values, uh, you, you are getting that VC is equal to 7 volt only. So VC is equal to 7 volt, IC is equal to 1 milliampere. So this is the operating point. VC is equal to 7 volt, IC is equal to 1 milliampere. So 7 volt or 1 milliampere is the operating point for the transistor right at this moment. Now, if I want to change the operating point, what I need to do, I have to change the value of RB because this RB, this base resistance is basically controlling the, the bias, the DC bias. RB is controlling the DC bias. So if I use a lower value of RB, so in that case, the uh, operating point will move upwards along this uh, load line because if I use a lower value of RB, as I've already mentioned, so uh, uh, the uh, corresponding value of this IB, the base current will be will be high. And as a matter of fact, the collector current will also be high and VC value will be less. So along the load line, you are moving upwards. Now let us check what is happening with RB is equal to 50 kilo ohms. So with RB is equal to 100 kilo ohms, you have seen that it is like 7 volt, 1 milliampere. Now, when RB is equal to 50 kilo ohms, When RB is equal to 50 kilo ohms, so in that case, you'll find that the corresponding value of this collector current will be 40 microampere because now here it was like 20 microampere. So instead of um, 100 kilo ohms, if I have 50 kilo ohms, obviously it will be multiplied. 20 microampere will be doubled, so 40 microampere. So under this condition, what will be the collector current? So collector current will be because beta is constant, we're assuming a constant beta. So 50 multiplied with 40 microamperes, it will become like 2 milliampere. So under this condition, if, if this is 2 milliampere collector current, then what will be the VC drop? This VC drop will be 2 milliampere multiplied with 2 kilo ohms. So 4 volt drop will take place across this load resistance RC. So 9 volt supply is over here, 9 volt minus 4 volt, so 5 volt. So 5 volt comma 2 milliampere. So along this DC load line, you are moving upwards. So you are moving towards the 
saturation region from the from the active or linear region because initially when rb was high like 100 kilo ohms this kind was moderate was like 1 milliampere i mean 10 microampere base current or 1 milliampere collector current now as you suppose uh, here uh, instead of having a constant rb you are having a potentiometer and you are changing the value of rb now as you change the value of rb from 100 to 50 kilo ohms that means you are reducing the uh, value of rb or you are increasing the base bias that means the base current is increasing ib is increasing if ib increases ic will also increase and vc will be less now, as a matter of fact you are moving from the from the active or linear region to the saturation region so 5 volt comma 2 milliampere will be the new operating point over here so this is this circuit is for the fixed bias circuit now fixed bias and base bias so in case of base bias circuit uh, you have seen that uh, these two points they are connected together so instead of having two different uh, supply voltage so these two supply voltage are the same so there is no need for dual supply voltage you have you require only one supply voltage say so 6 volt is over here and uh, this base is getting the uh, supply base is getting the bias from the same supply that is 6 volt we have two kilo ohms over here once again you see that the base resistance is relatively high because base current has to be low as compared to the corresponding base current for the saturation region because if the ib i mean rb is very small so in that case i will be large and the transistor will move into the saturation so it is a normal practice that always you use a higher value of rb in order to restrict the base current within the active or linear region now here you see that 530 kilo ohms is the base resistance rb over here the collector resistance is remaining constant that is 2 kilo ohms uh, emitter is grounded and you need to find out the dc load line and determine the operating point for beta is equal to 100 now, if I uh, follow the same uh, analogy, now in order to find out the DC load line, uh, you know, uh, DC load line uh, can be obtained from two different extreme conditions. One is that IC is equal to zero, second one is the VC is equal to zero. So this is the DC load line, IC versus VC graph. Now, two extreme points you have to find out. One is this point where your IC is equal to zero. That means you are uh, and in, in the cut cutoff region where IC is equal to zero or the IB is equal to zero. So VC is equal to maximum. And here there's a second point, second extreme point where uh, VC is equal to zero, uh, extreme condition where IC is maximum. So these are the two points. So if in order to draw a straight line, you know that uh, from your knowledge on coordinate geometry, that uh, in order to draw a straight line, you require only two points. So if you know two points, then you can easily draw a straight line. So these are the two points. One is this point, second one is that point. So in order to find out IC is equal to, so if I if I put IC is equal to zero, you need to find out what is the value of VCE. So if IC is equal to zero, you apply KVL one second across this loop, output loop. So uh, six volt is equal to IC RC drop plus VCE. Now if IC, this collector current equal to zero, so in that case, the entire six volt will be dropped across VC. So six volt comma zero, so this is one, one coordinate over here where uh, VC is maximum that is equal to VC is the one point IC is equal to zero VC is to zero. and the second point is where this VC this drop is equal to zero collector emitter drop is equal to zero but uh, remember that uh, th this is from the circuit point of view uh, for any transistor you can't expect that VC is equal to zero so obviously uh, load line is drawn on the circuit point of view so extreme condition is that this this voltage this collector emitter voltage can be at, at least it can be zero. So if this is zero, then what will be the value of collector current? You find out this one, six volt divided by two kilo ohms because this entire six volt is dropped across uh, this resistance, uh, two kilo ohms. So six volt by two kilo ohms, that is three milliampere. So three milliampere comma zero. So this is one point, zero comma three milliampere, zero volt comma three milliampere. And this is the second point, six volt comma zero milliampere. So if I know these two points, so you can easily draw this straight line. Now, the load line has been drawn. Now you have to find out the operating point for beta is equal to 100. Now in order to find out the operating point, one second, you need to find out what is the base current flowing through the circuit. So in order to find out the base current, you have to follow this uh, KVL equation in the uh, base emitter loop that is equal to IBRB plus VB is equal to VCC. One second, if I just follow this one, uh, VCC is equal to IBRB plus VB, that drop. Now, if I use, uh, uh, I mean, uh, if the non-zero value of uh, VB is uh, employed over here, so 6 volt supply minus 0.7 volt drop for VB divided by 530 kilo. So 
uh, ultimately you are getting 10 microampere IV. IV is equal to 10 microampere. Now if IV is equal to 10 microampere, what is the value of IC? Collect a current that is equal to beta times IV. Beta you know is 100. So 100 into 10 microampere that is equal to 1000 microampere or 1 milliampere. So 1 milliampere collect a current you are getting for this circuit. And accordingly, you can easily find out the correct emitter voltage that is VCC minus ICRC. So already one volt drop is, uh, I mean, the ICRC, IC is equal to one, uh, volt, uh, one milliampere, IC is equal to one milliampere. You have a uh, two kilo ohms resistance over here. So obviously, you have ICRC drop is equal to two volt. You have a six volt supply, so four volt. So four volt, comma one milliampere. So this is the uh, quiescent operating point. So over this straight line, so this is the quiescent operating point is 4 volt comma 1 milliampere. Obviously, uh, you, you can easily check that this 4 volt comma 1 milliampere, this particular point is lying on this straight line. You can easily check this one from your knowledge and coordinate geometry because already we have got this, this particular thing from the circuit point of view, right? Now, if I uh, uh, reduce the value of IB, uh, I mean RB from 530 kilo ohms to say, say 200 kilo ohms or 200 kilo ohms to say 50 kilo ohms, so obviously, is happening since RB is reduced from this equation. Since RB is reduced, instead of using 530 kilo ohms, if I use like uh, say 100 kilo ohms or even less, obviously IB will be more. Uh, it, it will be much higher than 10 microampere. And as a matter of fact, the collector current will also be high. It will not be like 1 milliampere, it will be high. And since IC is increasing, so VCE, this collector emitter drop, will be reduced because this is equal to VCC minus IC at C. So as IC increases, VCE will drop because VCC is constant. So uh, as you increase RB, you are moving from this point along this straight line, along this DC operating, uh, along this uh, DC load line. This operating point will be moved from th from this point to upwards uh, along this along this uh, towards towards A. So as you reduce the value of RB, the quiescent operating point is moving from B towards A. And as you increase the value of IB, uh, I mean as you increase the value of RB, uh, that means uh, you are providing less bias to the base circuit. So then the operating point will move towards towards the point B. So these are the so by means of this uh, or by means of this RB, this uh, base resistance, you can basically control or you can basically tune the operating point of the transistor. And depending upon your application, uh, I have already mentioned that it is customary that if I have like uh, 3 milliampere over here, 0 milliampere over here, so in order to have the maximum symmetrical swing, it, it will be wise to select the operating point in the middle. So if it is like 3 milliampere, maximum collector current, and 0 milliampere is the minimum collector current, so it will be wise uh, to uh, select the DC operating point at 1.5 milliampere. So the, the same question can be framed in a different way. Uh, instead of uh, providing this circuit, suppose it is told that, uh, that uh, you draw the DC load line for, for this particular circuit, and uh, find out, suppose RB is not given over here, and find out the value of RB, in order to uh, ensure that the maximum symmetrical swing is possible. So in that case, RB will be absent, right? So uh, first of all, uh, you can easily draw this uh, DC load line uh, from this uh, output circuit, because you know, uh, for the output circuit, only one equation is there, which I have mentioned several times, it is equal to this, uh, VCC is equal to ICRC plus VC. Now IC, uh, RC plus VC is equal to VCC. Now, uh, in order to find out these two points, uh, you have to find out, you have to put VC is equal to zero and IC is equal to zero. Accordingly, you can find out the other variables. So this three milliampere uh, and this zero, six volt. So you can easily find out these two points and you can draw the DC load line initially. Now DC load line is drawn. Your next question is that uh, you have to find out the value of RB so that this maximum symmetrical swing is possible. So you know that three volt, three milliampere is the maximum collector current, zero milliampere is the minimum collector current. So in order to ensure the maximum symmetrical swing is taking place, so you have to place the DC operating point in the middle. So three milliampere and zero milliampere. So what is the average? Average is 1.5 milliampere. So you have to put the IC to be 1.5 micro, uh, 1.5 milliampere because if the IC is 1.5 milliampere, then only the excursion could be maximum. Because here, if you see, here IC is equal to one milliampere. So in the positive side, IC can go up to, I mean the uh, this delta IC. That means the, uh, your Time varying IC, small IC, that can be as high as 2 milliampere because 1 milliampere is there. This is 3 milliampere. So you can you can go up to 3 milliampere. So 1 to 3. So the gap is here 2 milliampere. But here, 
in the negative side i mean in the during the negative cycle negative first cycle of the input signal considering a sinusoidal signal as an input here uh, it is it, the gap is only 1 milliampere only 1 1 milliampere to zero so only 1 milliampere gap is there so in one side you have 2 milliampere gap in other side you have 1 milliampere gap and already you know that for faithful amplification we want that uh, the entire waveform should be uh, so there should not be any dis uh, distortion so entire waveform should be replicated. So if I have a sinusoidal signal at the input, you must expect that sinusoidal signal is obtained at the output. So there should not be any distortion. So uh, if I uh, if I if I uh, put the operating point over here at one milliampere comma uh, one uh, four volt comma one milliampere, then you see that in the upper side there is a two million two, two milliampere excursion is possible, but in the lower side you have only one milliampere excursion is possible. So you can at most use a collector current. Uh, for which an excursion is equal to plus minus one milliampere. You can't go for plus minus two milliampere because for plus minus two milliampere, the for the positive side there will be no problem. For the plus two milliampere there will be no problem. But during the negative side, when uh, the input signal is like, I mean the input, uh, I mean when the kind is like uh, minus two milliampere, is one milliampere minus two milliampere there is minus one. So obviously the transistor will move into the off region. So in that case, the faithful amplification will not take place. So uh, the maximum, although uh, plus two milliampere is there in the positive side, but you cannot exploit this one because of this maximum symmetrical swing. So uh, you have to accordingly have to shift the this operating point, push an operating point. Now, if I instead of pressing over here at one million uh, four volt from one milliampere, if I select over here in the middle, in the middle where uh, the input signal, I mean the correct kind is equal to like one point five milliampere, then you see that. 1.5 to 3, the expression is 1.5, and 1.5 to 0, the expression is 1.5. Now, you can use a one input signal for which the correct kind of expression is one point plus minus 1.5 milliampere. So, last time the expression was only plus minus 1 milliampere, but this time the expression is like plus minus 1.5 milliampere. So, uh, you can use, uh, I mean, uh, you can uh, use a higher value of input signal to amplify the using the same circuit. So, accordingly, so what change has to be done? The change has to be done in the form of RB because you have to accordingly uh, shift the operating point. How to shift the operating point? You know, to shift the operating point, RB, this base relation is the only tool available to you. And so for 530 kilohms, you have seen that it is like 1 uh, milliampere. So in order to make it 1.5 uh, milliampere, you have to change this RB. And you can, uh, from this equation, you can easily find out because IB have now, uh, IB is given or IB is fixed at 1.5. VCC is 6 volt, uh, VB is 0.7 volt, RB is unknown. So RB is unknown, this IB is known now. So accordingly, you can find out the value of RB so that this maximum symmetrical thing is possible. So these are the different uh, changes which can be there in the same uh, same circuit. So considering the circuit, same circuit, uh, I mean, the, the different question can be asked uh, considering the other parameters are constant. So this is for the base bias circuit. Now let us consider another uh, circuit uh, uh, pertaining to the space bias. Now here uh, we are interested in finding out the change in the Q point. So last day while discussing the, the different types of biasing circuits like fixed bias circuit, and then emitter bias circuit, this voltage divider bias circuit, collector to base bias circuit. I mentioned that one of the disadvantages, one of the severe disadvantages or limitations of this circuit is that uh, for a change in the temperature. Or for changing the beta value, the quotient point changes a lot, right? So as a matter of fact, uh, so in this particular question, question number four, we are interested to uh, see the change in the uh, quotient point whenever there is a significant change in the temperature, and that's why this base bias circuit, although it is initially introduced to the students, but uh, ultimately this particular circuit is not at all used for uh, amplification operation. So here the question is, uh, determine the percentage change in the Q-point values over the temperature change from 25 degrees centigrade to 75 degrees centigrade. So temperature has been increased by three times, so 25 to 75. And beta value has also been increased from 100 to 150, so there is a 50% change in the beta value. We have to, for the simplicity, you can neglect any change in the base emitter voltage. Because you know as the temperature increases, the corresponding base emitter GB value is also reduced, but uh, the, and the leakage kind is also increased. But uh, these uh, changes uh, you can just neglect. This base emitter voltage change or the leakage current change you can just neglect. But uh, only one change you have to ensure the change in beta value. That when the temperature increases from 25 to 75, beta value increases from 100 to 150. 
So under this condition, you need to find out what is the change or percentage change in the Q point values. Now let us see what happens at 25 degree centigrade. Now at 25 degree centigrade, the, I mean the same formula is there. The formula is the same. This uh, base, you know, to find out the IB, the base current. You have VCC over here. So VCC minus VB divided by RB is equal to your base current. So if you put those values, 12 volt supply is over here. 12 volt VCC. 12 volt minus 0.7 volt uh, VCC uh, VB drop is there. 0.7 volt drop. And we have RB is equal to 100 kilo ohms. So you find that IB is equal to 1.113 milliampere. 0.113 milliampere is IB value, the base current. And the collector current is equal to beta times of that. Beta is 100 at 25 degree centigrade. And you find that 11.3 milliampere. And accordingly, you can easily calculate what is the VC. VC is equal to VCC minus ICRC. That is equal to 5.67 volt. If I just put those values. Now, what happens at 75 degree centigrade? At 75 degree centigrade, the beta is remaining, I mean, uh, IB is remaining the same, that is 0.113, because IB is essentially governed by the this base resistance. So as long as the base resistance is fixed at uh, 100 kilo ohms, so obviously there is no change in IB. IB is same like the previous one, 0.113 milliampere. But what is the value of IC? IC is increased. Last time it was uh, like 11.3 milliampere, now this time it is 17 milliampere, because beta has been increased because of the change in the temperature. Now, as beta increases, so IC increases from 11.3 to 17 milliampere. And as a matter of fact, VC must drop because uh, as IC, will, uh, IC increases, VC must drop. So that is the relation. So last time it was 5.61 volt. This time it is 2.48 volt. So now if I uh, calculate the percentage change in IC, you'll see that percentage change in IC is equal to 50%. So almost 50% change. So when beta changes by 50%, so uh, you see that the percentage change in IC is also 50%. And the percentage change in VC is, is uh, minus 56.3%. Obviously, it will decrease because as IC increases, VC will drop. So the corresponding change is, uh, is more than 50%. So obviously, this type of circuit is not at all desirable for our application because uh, with the change in beta, uh, you find that this uh, VC IC, that means this uh, operating point is not stabilized. Even if uh, the temperature is fixed, but uh, you replace the transistor with a different transistor having a different value of beta, then you see that this uh, this operating point will, will be completely different. Uh, first time it was uh, like 11.5.67 uh, 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 volt or 11.3 milliampere, and next you find 2.48 volt comma 17 milliampere. So uh, this operating point changes drastically. So as a matter of fact, this base pass circuit is not at all uh, desirable for uh, for biasing purpose. Now, uh, let us move to the uh, the next type of biasing circuit, that is the emitter bias circuit. And you know for emitter bias circuit, uh, instead of uh, putting the emitter to be at ground, here uh, there is a negative supply at the emitter. Uh, you need to provide negative supply because it's an NPN transistor. So until and unless you provide negative supply, this base emitter junction will not be forward biased. So unlike the previous uh, problem, here you see that the base is grounded. Last time you see that base was not grounded, rather base was connected to positive supply. And here, this time, base is grounded uh, through a resistance and uh, emitter terminal is connected to a negative supply in order to ensure that base emitter junction is forward biased. Now, uh, once again, the same problem, determine how much the Q point will change over a temperature change where beta increases from 85 to 100 and base emitter voltage decreases. So now, we have considered two different aspects. One is uh, the beta increases from 85 to 100 because of the change of temperature perhaps. And uh, second one is the base emitter voltage uh, drop uh, that, that is also decreasing from 0.7 volt to 0.6 volt. So uh, they, are, uh, they have considered two different uh, attributes. So last time, only one change was considered, that is the change in beta. And this time, two changes. That means the change in beta, beta will increase from 85 to 100 and the base emitter voltage drop that is decreasing from 0.7 to 0.6. So you have to consider both of these two things. And you have to check uh, how much uh, change, how much percentage change is taking place. Now, uh, uh, since the beta is large, so once again, they have made an approximation. But uh, if you are pretty much accurate, then you can easily find out the exact relation. So first of all, you just uh, observe this base emitter circuit. So for the base emitter circuit, uh, 
this collector current we are assuming that since beta is very large so collector current and the emitter current they are almost same but you know that collector current is equal to i mean uh, beta times ib whereas emitter current is equal to 1 plus beta times ib now if beta is very large then beta and 1 plus beta can be considered to be almost same so that's why they are considered ic and i they are almost same now anyway so if they are same if they are considered to be same ic and i the collector current and the emitter current then what will be the value of this emitter current how to find it out you know that there is ib is flowing through this resistance rb ib is flowing through this resistance so ib rb drop will take place across this we have a vb drop over here and emitter current will flow over here so ie re drop will be there and we have a supply minus ve over there so ve minus uh, minus vb so if you if you go from emitter circuit to ground like this so negative terminal is connected over here negative positive and then positive is connected to ground so negative positive so ve minus vb this is the available voltage that must be equated to the total voltage drop what is the total voltage drop one is this ie re drop ie re drop across this resistance and second drop is ib rb drop now what is ib rb i can write ib rb to be ie rb by beta ie rb is fine that is ie rb emitter current multiplied with the emitter resistance that is fine and this drop ib rb this ib rb is nothing but ie rb divided by 1 plus b right now they have considered beta to be large so beta and 1 plus beta they have considered to be same so that's why rb by beta only now other values are given rb uh, is 100 kilo ohms re 10 kilo ohms so putting all those values uh, you find that this collector current is equal to 1.73 milliampere and the, what about the collector voltage how to find out the collector voltage remember this is the collector voltage that means the potential at this point absolute potential at this point so how to find out the collector potential collector potential is equal to vcc you know vcc equal to 20 volt uh, you have already got the value of collector current it is 1.73 milliampere so 1.73 multiplied by 4.7 kilo ohms that is a drop across this load resistance rc so 20 volt minus this drop 1.7 mult into 4.7 kilo ohms so that will give you 1.11.9 volt 11.9 volt is the collector potential at this particular point and how to find out the emitter potential last time we have seen that this collector potential and the collector emitter potential was the same because emitter was not uh, connected to any supply there was no resistance connected to the emitter emitter was directly connected to ground so eventually this ve or emitter potential absolute potential of the emitter is equal to 0 volt but this time you can't say that because emitter is not directly connected to ground emitter is connected to a resistance and the supply is there a negative supply is there obviously so in order to find out vc you need to find out the absolute value of the collector potential and the absolute value of the emitter potential and if i just find out the subtraction i mean the difference between these two we can easily find out what is the value of vce so uh, initially i have got vc collector potential this is you know 20 uh, uh, 1.73 kilo ohms multiplied with milliampere so it will be in the unit of volt so putting those values you are getting it to be 11.9 volt so 11.9 volt is the absolute potential at the collector terminal how to find out the emitter term emitter potential emitter potential is minus ve plus ie re minus ve plus ie re that is the that is the uh, emitter potential absolute potential of the emitter so uh, it is like minus 20 volt plus ie uh, ie is equal to ic so they are considered to be same 1.73 milliampere but if you are very much accurate then uh, for accurate calculation Uh, instead of putting ic to be equal to ie what you can do is ic is equal to like alpha times ie alpha is equal to beta by 1 plus beta uh, but uh, if beta is very large alpha will be almost equal to 1 so that's why they have neglected but uh, for the exact calculation you can put the value of uh, alpha over here so anyway so uh, 1.73 milliampere is there uh, for the emitter current multiplied with the resistance uh, emitter resistance that is 10 kilo ohms and you are getting the uh, potential absolute potential to be at minus 2.7 volt so minus 2.7 volt and you have uh, 11.9 volts collector potential emitter potential minus 2.7 volt so you see that vc is equal to uh, the difference between these two vc minus v so it is like 14.6 volt so what is operating point so operating point the question operating point is uh, 14.6 volt comma 1.7 milliampere vc comma ic what is vc 14.6 what is ic that is 1.7 milliampere
now let us uh, consider the second case uh, well uh, your uh, beta value is increased from 85 to 100 and pb is dropped from 0.7 to 0.6 so what is happening over here following by the same expression uh, same equation b minus vb by rb over here you see that uh, it is like 1.76 milliampere unlike uh, 1.73 this time it is 1.76 milliampere only and uh, vc uh, is equal to the, following the same equation you will find that vc is equal to 11.7 last time it was 11.9 volt 11.7 v is equal to minus 2.4 volt so vc is equal to 14.1 volt so last time it was 14.6 volt so uh, in order to ch find out the percentage change in ic so you see that only 1.7% increase in IC and uh, minus 3.5% increase in IC. So you must appreciate that uh, unlike the previous circuit, unlike the, your uh, base bias circuit, as you have seen over here, this circuit, you have seen that there is, a, there is a considerable change, either increase or decrease in the value of IC and VC. You have seen that 50% increase was taking place in the value of IC, 6.5% decrease was taking place in the value of VC. It's considerable significant change took place but here because of something so what is that something that something is resistant this emitter resistant this, uh, whenever you study uh, the feedback amplifiers spectrum module you see that this emitter resistance over here is playing a pivotal role in controlling this uh, i mean in controlling the stability of this uh, operating point right uh, so this time you have seen that for base by circuit emitter is directly connected to ground so there was no element which can basically control the change in the quiescent point but here you have this emitter resistance rd this emitter resistance basically controlling the uh, any change in the q point and you have seen that uh, the change is obviously taking place but the amount the magnitude of the changes is severely small is like only 1.7 percent increase is taking place for ic and uh, for vc it is like 3.5 percent decrease and that is because of uh, this emitter bias circuit so obviously you must appreciate that this emitter bias circuit increases the stability as compared to the base bias circuit. Now let us move to the, uh, the next type of biasing circuit, collector to base bias circuit. So uh, the question is that you have to find out the operating point for beta is equal to 100. So once again, uh, the same, I mean, for the different circuits, you must appreciate that for different circuits, there are different trivial rules. So already, uh, I, I hope that you have uh, already uh, uh, got the information regarding KVL, KCL, these laws. Uh, you have studied this in circuit theory. But for different circuits, the application will be different. Now, because the connections are different. Now, for this circuit, uh, you have to find out uh, this value of uh, operating point. And you know that uh, how to solve this circuit, you have to uh, VCC over here. So VCC is equal to, this is the supply voltage, and this is dropped across three parts. What are the, those three parts? One is this drop across this collector resistance RC. Second one is the drop across this base resistance RB. And second one and third one is the drop across this VBE. So there are three drops and VCC can be equated to this, this drop plus this drop plus this drop. So VCC is equal to ICRC plus you have this IB into RB plus you have this VBE. So I can write VCC is equal to IBRB if I multiply IB with this. So this is equal to IBRB plus beta IBRC. What is beta IB? Beta IB is equal to IC. So ICRC plus VB. The so same equation, VCC is equal to ICRC plus IBRB plus VB. Now you can write IB to be, IC to be beta times IB. So uh, accordingly, the only one uh, unknown is here. Is that unknown? Unknown is equal to IB, base current, DC base current. Quiescent base current. All the values are given to you. RB is equal to 100 kilo ohms. VC is equal to 20, 20 volt. Uh, RC is equal to 1 kilo ohms. And beta is equal to 100. So in this particular equation, all the values are known. RB is known, VC is known, VB is known, beta known, RC known. The only unknown is IB. So uh, putting those values, you are getting IB to be equal to 0 0.096 milliampere. That is the base current, 0 0.096 milliampere or it is coming like 96 microamp here. Uh, now, uh, so what about the operating points? So whenever we say operating point, operating point means this VC uh, comma IC, that particular coordinate, VC comma IC, right? So 
uh, and if you know i i mean that is 0.096 mA and knowing the value of beta uh, you can easily find out the value of i there is a collector current which is equal to 9.6 mA over here and uh, what is the collector emitter voltage this voltage equal to vcc minus icrc drop so now you can easily find out vc is equal to this correct potential because the emitter is connected to ground so as a matter of fact this collector for the absolute value of the collector potential and collector emitter drop will be the same because emitter is connected to ground but for the last circuit you have seen that this emitter was not connected to ground so that's why you have to individually find out the collector potential and the emitter potential so putting those values you, you, you are seeing that vc is equal to 10.4 volt so the operating point is 10.4 volt comma 9.6 mA for this collector based circuit collector based bias circuit now here the same circuit um, the collector based uh, bias circuit but uh, uh, it is uh, said that you have to set the operating point as 2 volt comma 1 mA and you have to find out the value of rb so rb you need to find out now vb is given 0 0.6 0 0.7 volt now vb is given 0 0.7 volt ic is also given like 1 mA, so it is given by 1 mA, so we can easily find out the value of IB, that is equal to IC by beta, beta is also given 100. So IB is equal to 0 0.01 mA. Now what is VCE over here? So VC is basically divided into two segments, one is VCB plus VBE. Collector to emitter potential is equal to collector to base potential plus base to emitter potential. So you have to, uh, already you know that the operating point is given at two fold. So VC is equal to 2 volt, that is given, already given, 2 volt. What is the VB for a silicon transistor? We are assuming VB to be 0.7 volt. So accordingly, you know what is the PCB drop? PCB drop is nothing but the difference between these two, 2 volt and 0.7 volt is equal to 1.3 volt. So PCB drop is equal to 1.3 volt, you know. So that drop is nothing but drop across the resistance, base resistance RT. So that is equal to 1.3 volt. What is that drop? That drop is equal to IP or drop. So out of this IB and RB, you know this uh, IB is given, we have already calculated IB to be 0 0.01 mA, you know the drop. Now simple Ohm's law will give you the solution. Uh, this 1.3 volt divided by 0 0.01 mA, that is equal to 130 kilo ohm. So 130 kilo ohm is the value of the this resistance. So if, if you want to set operating point at 2 volt or 1 mA, accordingly, you can find out the value of RB to be 130 kilo ohms. Now let us move to the, the final uh, biasing circuit, that is the voltage divider bias circuit. Now uh, this circuit is, is a tricky one. Uh, now uh, already uh, last day I mentioned that there are two different things you have to consider. You have to think about. One is uh, the current that is flowing through this resistance. I mean, uh, perhaps you know the architecture very well. We have discussed this architecture in detail in the last class. Now we have a uh, two resistance over here, the voltage divider uh, law will be prevalent in this particular case. We have R1, R2, two resistances are there. Uh, so in this particular uh, question, they have considered these two resistances to be same, 10 kilo ohms each. We have a 20 volt supply. So R is equal to one kilo ohms. We have an emitter resistance of five kilo ohms. Now you know that uh, at this particular point, at this particular node, there is a division. There is a division of current. One part will, will flow through this R2 and the rest part will flow through this IB. Now, we know that uh, this value of uh, base current is, is pretty small in the order of few microampere as compared to the value of this, uh, this resistance, I mean the value of the current that is flowing through this resistance R2. Now, if I assume that the collector, I mean the base current is pretty small with respect to this, uh, this current, that is I2 current that is flowing through R2. So in that case, uh, we, we ensure that or we admit that the transistor is not providing any load to the circuit itself. Since the base current is very small, so I, I can expect that almost all the current which is flowing through this R1, th through this resistance, almost all the current will flow through this R2. So there is no load. So transistor will act as no load in this particular circuit, and which is very easy to analyze under this condition. And this type of uh, biasing circuit is known as a stiff voltage divider bias, stiff. Because irrespective of the value of your IB, I mean, irrespective of the value of your uh, beta value for this transistor, this uh, this potential, potential at this point will be remaining constant because this is basically governed by the supply voltage and uh, these two resistances, R1 and R2, irrespective of the value of the transistor parameter. So that's what is known as a stiff voltage divider bias because the potential at this point is remaining constant always because transistor is not loading the circuit. 
so under this condition you can easily find out the value of uh, this uh, i mean the voltage across at this particular point it's very easy if i neglect the uh, role of iv or if i neglect the effect of iv over here that means iv is very small i can just eliminate i can just neglect the effect of iv which is a, a case of a steep voltage divided by s so then you see that vcc by r1 plus r2 divided by r2 is the voltage drop it's very simple to analyze so 20 volt signal is 20 volt supply is there you have a 10 kilohms uh, r1 10 kilohms r2 so you understand that this 20 volt will be equally divided across these two resistances so this voltage will be 10 volt this voltage will be constant at 10 10 volt irrespective of the uh, transistor even if you, you even if you uh, replace the transistor with a different transistor having a different beta then also this value is, will be at 10 volt because uh, this transistor uh, will not playing any role in controlling the potential at this point now once you get the potential at this point that is 10 volt you can easily find out what is the value of at this potential what is the value at this potential because this if this is 10 volt now v2 this potential at this point is equal to vbe plus iere this drop this potential v2 is equal to vbe base emitter potential plus iere if i neglect vbe drop so in that case uh, this uh, 10 volt will be dropped across this load range across this emitter resistance 5 kilohms so accordingly you can calculate what is the value of i ie you have to find out the emitter current and collect a potential for the given circuit so i is equal to coming like 2 milli ampere now if you are very much accurate in that case you cannot neglect the vbe uh, so in that case you have to ensure that vbe is equal to 0.6 volt or 0.7 volt so that drop you have to consider so 10 volt over here so 0.6 to 0.7 volt drop is taking across this base emitter junction so rest 9.4 or 9.3 volt is available across this 5 kilohms so accordingly you can find out what is the value of ie so correct kind you can uh, emitter kind you can find out and uh, if the beta is given uh, beta is given then you can uh, put the value of uh, beta over here or alpha in, in other other words in order to find out the value of ic the collector current and if i assume a very high value of beta so in that case ic and ie collector current and emitter current to be the same so uh, you can uh, it as 1 uh, milli ampere now what is the value of vc vc you know vc the collector emitter potential this is nothing but the total drop is vcc now this total drop i mean total supply is vcc now this supply is divided into three segment one is the drop across this rc second one is this vc drop and third one is the drop across the re so vcc is equal to vce plus icrc plus iere so if i assume that alpha is very uh, i mean alpha is close to 1 or beta is very large so in that case ic and ie to be considered to be same in that case ic into rc and ic into re i mean ic into re and ie into re will be the same so accordingly uh, you can find out vc vcc minus ic into rc sorry to this equation so it will be like uh, if i put those values 20 minus 2 million into 6 kilohms we have 5 kilohms over here 1 kilohms total resistance 6 kilohms and the collector current uh, to be the same as emitter current so 2 million here so uh, putting those values you are getting to be 8 volt so collector potential will be 18 volt 8 volt is this potential so what is the collector potential collector potential is 20 volt minus collector current is 1 uh, 2 milli ampere 2 milli ampere multiplied 1 kilo ohms is from 2 volt so 20 volt minus 2 volt that is 18 volt so this collector potential what is the dc operating point dc operating point is 8 volt comma 2 milli ampere 8 volt is a vc what is i that is 2 milli ampere but remember while analyzing the circuit in this way we have made lot of approximations as approximation what we have made is Uh, we, we are assuming that the base current is is so small, the base current that is that is entering here through the base terminal it is so small that it it is not loading the entire. I mean the transistor is not loading the entire circuit, but which is not eventually true. For a rough calculation, for a quick calculation, you can go by this formula. But remember, this is for the steep voltage divider circuit, steep voltage divider bias circuit. But this is an approximation. So in order to find out the exact calculation, you have to ensure or you have to admit that there is a transistor. and depending upon the value of the base current the current that is flowing through r2 is also determined because the total current that is entering at this particular node total current that is flowing through this r1 is divided into two segment one is through this path and another is through that path if i if i apply kcl kirchhoff's current law then you you know that the total current that is entering at this node i1 so it is divided into two segment one is ib second one is i2 now As of now, we have assumed that I2 uh, is very very large as compared to IB. 
So in that case, I one and I two, they are they are uh, same. They are equivalent. They are same. But uh, you cannot neglect I B always. Uh, under this condition, the circuit is known to be an, uh, a non-stiff voltage divider bias, non-stiff. So if I neglect I B, in that case, it will be a stiff voltage divider bias because the value of uh, potential at this point will be remaining constant. Otherwise, I have to take into account the role of I B over here. That means the transistor is basically loading the other circuit, the, the other part of the circuit. So in this, uh, for for this particular calculation, what you need to do is that you have to find out the Thevenin equivalent uh, voltage and Thevenin equivalent resistance. Looking at this base terminal, looking at this base terminal, you need to find out the Thevenin equivalent voltage and the Thevenin equivalent resistance. So I hope that uh, you have already studied about this Thevenin equivalent circuit in, in your circuit theory. Now looking at this terminal, so from this perspective, looking at, looking from this point, if the transistor as a viewer Suppose you are the transistor. You are the you are at the base of the transistor, and you are viewing what is happening across uh, across uh, along this path. What is happening over here? You need to find out what is the voltage that I am getting over here. What is effective voltage, and what is effective resistance I am getting over here? So in order to find out the effective voltage, you know, which is 20 volt. You have R1 10 kilo ohms, R2 10 kilo ohms. So 20 volt uh, divided by R1 uh, plus R2 multiplied with R2 is the Thevenin equivalent voltage. So V Thevenin will be equal to VCC by R1 plus R2 multiplied with R2. So looking at this point, looking from this point, this point towards towards this junction, towards the junction point, point two, the effective resistance, effective uh, the Thevenin equivalent resistance will be R1 uh, R2 by R1 plus R2 multiplied with VCC. But what will be the Thevenin equivalent resistance? So you have to find the Thevenin equivalent resistance. Uh, you have to put uh, VCC supply to be at zero. That means it will be grounded. Short circuited. What will be the effective resistance? So you see that looking at this point, there are two branches in shunt. One is from this point to that point. One is from this point to ground through R2. Another one is from this point to R1 through ground. This point through ground through R1. So there are three different resistances. One is R1. Second one is R2. They are coming in shunt. So R1 parallel R2, or R1 R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So this is the Thevenin equivalent resistance. So uh, the effect of this R1, R2, and the supply voltage will be represented, will be substituted by one Thevenin equivalent voltage and Thevenin equivalent resistance. So, what is the Thevenin equivalent voltage? That is equal to VCC by R1 plus R2 multiplied with R2. And what is the Thevenin equivalent resistance? R1 parallel R2. So, instead of having this voltage divider circuit, this R1, R2 combination and VCC, you can simplify the circuit by means of one Thevenin equivalent voltage. In series with the Thevenin equivalent resistance. So instead of having this combination, you have only a V Thevenin over here and you have a R Thevenin over here, and this is connected to uh, the base of this particular transistor. Then you can find out what is the effect or what is the value of IB. So once again, you know the current that is flowing is equal to IB through this Thevenin equivalent resistance. So V Thevenin is divided into three segments. One is the drop across this R, R Thevenin, that is IB R Thevenin. Second one is the drop across base emitter junction, that is DBE. And third one is the drop across is RD, that is IERD. And accordingly, you can find out the uh, base current. So in which case, you are considering the effect of the transistor. That means the transistor is loading the, the this, this voltage divider circuit. So, so far in this particular case, we have assumed that transistor is not loading the voltage divider circuit. And now, if I go by this form, if I go by this concept of uh, Thevenin equivalent voltage and Thevenin equivalent resistance, then uh, it is uh, expected that transistor is loading the circuit, and accordingly, you have to find out the base current IB following by th those formula. And secondly, you cannot neglect this VB. VB here we have neglected VB. Uh, we have just considered to be zero, but you cannot neglect because there is a significant drop. Point seven volt drop is taking place that you cannot neglect. So that you need to take into account. And uh, beta value, we are assuming beta is very large. So IC and IE, they have to be same. That's why uh, we are assuming that both of these two values are 2 milliampere. That might not be the case always. So a lot of approximations we are taking in this particular example. So now uh, it is your, uh, so I can consider this to be an assignment for you to find out this, uh, the same problem. The problem is the same. Uh, find out the emitter current and the character potential for the given circuit without an approximation. So we have to, uh, you can select any value of beta, let the beta value to be 100. You, you can uh, consider beta to be 100. 
and considering meter to be 100 and the base emitter drop to be 0.7 volt, uh, um, uh, my suggestion is that you, you can redo the same exercise. You can uh, uh, redo the same exercise, assuming that no approximation is taking place over here. That means transistor is loading the this voltage divider circuit. So uh, it is not a, a stiff kind of voltage divider bias. That is a non-stiff voltage divider bias we're assuming. So you have to go by this uh, the Thevenin model, Thevenin equivalent voltage, Thevenin equivalent resistance, that model you have to consider. Uh, you cannot neglect uh, the value of, uh, I mean, you cannot neglect the implication of beta. So IC and I, you cannot uh, take, you cannot consider the same IC and I. So obviously they are related by some alpha. So, so far we have assumed that alpha is equal to one, but uh, if, uh, if beta is equal to 100, so this 100 by 101.99 something. So that value of alpha you have to consider instead of one. And thirdly, the this base emitter drop, uh, they have considered to be uh, zero. Uh, they have neglected this one uh, with respect to this uh, 10 volts. So they have considered it to be neglected. So you cannot consider, uh, you, you cannot just neglect uh, this VB drop. You can consider as a non-zero VB, like 0 0.7 volt. So considering those three constants, right? So once again, you can redo the same thing. The, you can redo the same problem and you can find out the emitter current and collector potential for the given circuit. And then your job is to take what difference if you are getting in terms of your result. Here you have got like a collector potential to be at uh, 18 volt, collector emitter potential to be at 8 volt, and collector current or emitter current to be at 2, 2 milliampere. These are the three results 18 volt, 8 volt, and 2 milliampere without any approximation. So, rough calculation. Now, for accurate calculation, for exact calculation, you can do the same thing following those three constraints. And uh, I expect that you will submit this assignment uh, before the next class, uh, that means uh, within this week. Now with this, uh, let me conclude today's lecture.